This episode of Vinland Saga flashes over to see what Canute has been up to these past few years as we cut over to Canute's story instead of Thorfinn's. And I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, I think this is the first episode of Vinland Saga in its entirety that has not featured Thorfinn. I think this is the very first episode. So when the episode count is all said and done and the series is over, we can't say that Thorfinn appeared in every single episode. Um, so this episode adapts uh, chapter 61 and 62 of the manga, I do believe. I had it here. I actually brought the manga up with me because what I was going to do in this video is start like specifically mentioning changes that the anime makes because uh, because of the end of the last episode a lot of people were talking about Einar's reaction to Thorfinn in the barn and they were talking about the differences of the manga and it is rather different than the manga so I thought it would be fun from now on to literally just have the manga next to me when I talk about the episode and then see the differences of what happened but truthfully these two chapters that were adapted in this episode we're pretty much panel by panel exact adaptation from the manga. So I can't really talk about much being different other than uh, there's a little bit of an elongated scene at the end of the episode where Canute gets crowned king. You actually see him walk to the throne, sit down, embrace the crown. You get to see him look different. And really, I have been waiting for this episode for a long time simply because I am just so curious of how anime only fans are going to react to the transition of Thor or the transition of Canute because obviously towards the latter half of season one and especially in the final episode you see that Canute is more um you know uh forward thinking about what is going to happen when he eventually takes the throne wanting to take the throne and having this idea of wanting to create heaven on earth by any means necessary even in the most chaotic of ways there is definitely a similarity between Thorfinn and uh, Canute, where Canute actually reaches this peak first, where he just decides that he is going to create this world by any means necessary, and he is willing to do very dark, dastardly, you know, messed up things behind the scenes in order to make this happen, uh, even to the point of poisoning people, even to the point of burning almost entire countries down, like whatever he can do to make this happen, to gain as much control as possible. And what I like so much about this episode and this sequence in particular is showing the values of Canute, and not just his willingness to do this, but also uh, just the things that matter and the things that don't matter to him as he gets to uh, Mercia, I believe, and he's pretty much taken over the country like it's good to go. And, you know, he has his his soldiers and his, the Viking warriors and everybody else that's there that's doing their typical pillaging spoils of war after effects of what happens when you win battles. And Canute is like, no, we're not doing that. And he literally goes so far as to say the people that are doing that fucking behead them because they are not going to be any insubordination underneath my ruling, which is crazy. Like you're taking this actual normal thing that these kinds of people would do, you know, to kind of just find people to be slaves and to pillage and to take the riches and take the women and do all that sort of normal fun stuff that you do on a Saturday evening. And Canute is like, no, that's not happening. And uh, it's the beginning of kind of seeing just how far Canute is willing to go to create this world that he is hoping to, to build. But in order to do that, he has to conquer and ultimately he has to become king. He has to, by any means necessary, become the person that is giving out the orders, that is giving out the rulings, that is taking over the different lands uh, around him. He has to be the guy, all right? And he is doing whatever he can to be that person, uh, as dark as it may get. But allowing these things to happen along the way where he's stopping the kind of overabundance of, you know, war and devastation uh, where he can. But at the same time, he's creating this devastation to get there. So it's sort of like uh, you can't make an omelet without cracking a few eggs. Like he doesn't care what gets destroyed along the way as long as by the end of it, everyone bows to his feet and uh, begins to listen to what he wants to have done. And it would make sense that the more people you have under your rule, the more peace that you could create because there would be less people to be an adversary towards you. You would have less enemies in a way if everybody's under your ruling. So how do you get this sort of war to cease? Well, you have to conquer and you have to rule everything. And then you basically make all these dealings of war uh, something that people are no longer able to do. And so I, I love just the confliction of the philosophy between Canute and, and what Thorfinn will eventually grow to be. Um, not giving spoilers away in this video for anime onlys, but they are like two sides of the same coin in a way. And I always thought that was very interesting. 
Um, and Canute, you know, his character development and the way that he's changed and his willingness to do it. And also, uh, it doesn't get into it so much of this episode, but it's not a spoiler to say that his father had warned him about the curse of the crown and what that could mean as a person and how it does change you and how it forces you to change. And nobody with that amount of power could ever remain the same person as they were beforehand, uh, regardless. And it's, it's maybe it's the idea that power corrupts, but it's not even corruption in Canute's case. I don't think it's corruption. I think it's more so, uh, you now have the ability and the resources to do whatever you want to do. And before you didn't have the power to do so. So you're subdued in some way. You're more obedient when you don't have to be obedient to anybody else that opens you up to do whatever your heart truly desires which is something that most people can't do because they have to remain obedient to somebody else we also get to see thorkel very briefly in this episode and i loved it so much dude every time thorkel is on screen he is just one of those characters i i always consider him to be a character like hisoka from hunter hunter not i mean they both do love fighting but in very different ways um if you know, you know. But I, I think that uh, they kind of represent to me like a wild card character, which they are a character you could throw in at any moment and just everything can be like turned upside down in an instant. That doesn't really happen in this episode, but he is just that kind of character. And also they just draw so much energy from the screen. Like when they're on screen, you can't take your eyes off them. When Thorkel shows up, Everything just lights up. Everything just becomes 10 times better. He's just one of those characters that when you use him strategically, obviously he can't be the main character because that would just be too much. But being the kind of character he is, uh, you know, Yukimura has this sort of like ace in the hole that whenever he wants to shake things up or make things more interesting or add 10 times more energy to a scene, you can just plop Thorkel in and, and things just explode. So... He's only got well, like one moment, but I loved it. I, I love how uh, Canute is like, you know, I'm here because I have to like quell this guy because we have to stop the war. We have to stop the fight right now. The leader isn't dead. You know, Thorkel wants to fight to the last man, and Canute's like, nah, we're good. Like we we got it. Like it's it's taken care of. And so they send uh, you know Th Thorkel off somewhere else, but he's not really having it. You know, he's not really having this sort of this sort of new philosophy that Canute has uh, when it comes to conquering, which is great. Uh, the more like behind the scenes approach, the more, um, I guess you could say less honorable approach, you know, that he goes through as Thorkel is a lot more in your face, pick up the weapon. We fight to the, to the last man, may the best man win. Canute's a little bit more like, no, I'm going to win regardless. And that's why I love, so when he gets to, uh, the leader of Mercia here and, uh, you know, he has all the riches that he's willing to give Canute if he vacates, you know, this is all yours. Canute doesn't care about the treasure. You know, you see, uh, I forget the character's name, Ragnar's brother, who's looking at the treasure like, oh my God. And Canute's like, this is, uh, this is a pity offering. What is this? This is useless to me. Like he does not care about the wealth. He cares about the power. And, you know, he convinces this character to betray his own leader to get rid of one of the uh, adversaries towards getting the throne ultimately. And so he shows him what he can do and he goes outside and he lights his signal fire and then you know all of these different buildings and houses go up in flames at the same time. And Canute's like, that's, this is, <laughs> he doesn't say this, but <laughs> this is just a fraction of my power. You know, that's the vibe that's going out. And uh, I love it, man. The other two characters, uh, Ethelred and Edmund, you know, they get taken out and so the throne ultimately goes to Canute, who he accepts it without any seeming, without seeming to have any joy whatsoever. And, and he doesn't. He just sees this as um, the means to an end, the only way to do what he wants to do to the world. And so it's a by any means necessary sort of event. So I thought it was great, uh, a great way to show Canute's character and his progression. I thought Thorkel's reaction was very genuine. Floki is there, I'm just being a dick. I don't know, he's just, he's just there. But overall, I thought this was a great episode. I really enjoyed it. I like seeing what was happening in other parts of the world. I'm no history buff, so to me, this is just kind of fun to experience as a character just deciding to do something and the ways that he goes about it. You know, I'm not really comparing it to real life history or anything like that. If you guys want to help educate me, I would love to know more. I wish I, like, I know, like, the basics, all right, but, like, I wish I knew more because when I watch Vinland Saga, sometimes I'm like, wait, what was happening at this time in history? I don't, I don't know. 
all I know is that I love this series and it has great characters and great story writing and uh, I think season two has done a great job so far. I know some people are upset about particular things, but really at, at the end of the day, you know, I consider manga and anime to be two different mediums. Uh, I don't consi I don't expect the anime to do every single thing 100% the same way that the manga did. Like, it's an adaptation, right? It's the same thing if you were turning a book into a movie. It's not going to be the exact same thing. So we, we're always going to have the manga. It's always going to be here. It's always going to be one of the best ways to experience it. But I do think that the anime has done a fantastic job. I'm a big fan of it, uh, regardless of what you think about it. I mean, look, we're, we're coming from a world where, like, to me, a bad anime is Berserk 2016, all right? So the fact that Vinland Saga is actually getting quality animation and a quality adaptation, good voice acting, good music, I mean, fuck, dude, I'm in heaven right now. Plus, it's the middle of winter. This is the only thing getting me through winter, man. This is the only thing I have look to look forward to week to week. Just let me enjoy it, bro. No, uh, yeah, but anyways, let me know what you think of the episode down below. Whether you like it or don't like it, go ahead and comment. We will discuss it. Um, also guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. Uh, you guys that are supporting the Vinland Saga content means a lot to me, man. Uh, cause there's not a lot of us out there. So we got to build the community, especially on this channel. Like I want more Vinland Saga fans here. So if you're, uh, into Vinland Saga, come on, man, you're welcome here. It's my third favorite manga of all time. So let's, let's bring it in. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Give this video a like and comment if you enjoyed it to help it in the algorithm. If you want to support the channel on that deeper level, I do have a Patreon uh, channel memberships and merch store linked down below. Other than that, or you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I never say that. I never say Twitter. And it's linked down below also, but I never mention it. But I'm mentioning it now. Now I'm mentioning it. All right? It's there. You can do that too. Anyways, I love you guys. We'll talk to you later.